In a previous video, I showed you how to connect DocAssemble to OpenAI's API in order to create a delicious recipe no matter the ingredients that you had. But as you're probably aware, DocAssemble is predominantly a legal industry application, and many people are probably wondering also how to do something with legal documents with OpenAI through DocAssemble. So in this next video, I'm going to show you how to use OpenAI with DocAssemble to summarize legal documents that are PDFs that you can upload to DocAssemble, create a vector index, and then use that vector index to create a summary or ask questions of the documents themselves. I'm going to go over here to my playground and take a look at the application that I've written. If you want to copy along, you're free to do so, or you can use the link in the comments to check out the code that I'm using in this video. You'll see here I've got my one YAML file called FileDex, and I'm pulling in a module, which we'll get to in just a moment. I have my first question, which asks the user to upload a file. This is using the data type file, which creates a file upload field and file handling procedures for DocAssemble. My next block here is a code block where I use the create index function that comes from this module to send the path of the directory where the file is stored and have my module use that to create the vector index that then gets dumped as the value for this variable, your summary. And then at the last, I have my mandatory true block with sub question and your summary gets displayed. So just 19 lines in this YAML file to do what I need it to do. But the real stuff happens over in my module. So here in my module, I have my file index.py file, which is a Python module. And you'll see up here in the first several lines, I'm importing a lot of stuff from different Python packages. The first package that I'm using here is called llama index. If you're unfamiliar with llama index, I highly recommend that you go and check it out. It's a Python library that allows you to do a lot of very nifty things with generative AI models, but mainly lets you use data in different ways and connect to data in different ways without having to write a whole heck of a lot of code. A huge caveat for this video is that you need to pay attention to the version that you're using of these Python packages. For this video, I'm using Llama Index 0.8.4, which is, as of this video, is the most current version of Llama Index. Llama Hub is 0.23, and then Langchain, which is also necessary, is 00.268. These Python packages get updated very regularly and changed very regularly. So you need to pay attention to the versions that you're using and how they work. If you follow along with these numbered versions, this tutorial should let you do what you need to do. But if you go and update Llama Index or Llama Hub or Langchain, don't be surprised if things start to break because they frequently change how things operate and what things are called inside the packages. So now with that caveat, let's go back to our modules and talk about what's going on. So back in my module file, you'll see from line one, I'm importing a whole heck of a lot of stuff from Llama Index as helpers. These are built-ins that Llama Index has pre-programmed and preloaded in the package. I'm also using Langchain here as a package and importing their OpenAI module. And I'm importing chat models from this chat OpenAI, as well as OpenAI itself and OS. I'm also importing the helper that lets me get configuration variables from my config file in DocAssemble. If you watched the last video, you'll remember that I'm storing my OpenAI key in my config file. That way I can pull it in whenever I need to and not have to paste it into every Python file. Also, it's very much more secure to do it this way. Another note here, a weirdness about Llama Index is that it requires the OpenAI key to be an environment variable. That's the reason behind line seven and why I'm pulling in the OS Python package. OS stands for operating systems and it is a shorthand way of letting me set an environment variable whenever this Python file is run 
and adds the OpenAI key here that it's getting from the config file as the environment variable called OpenAI key. For OpenAI itself as that Python package, I also need to set that value here as well, so I'm really pulling in my OpenAI key twice, just a weirdness of how these packages currently work. Down here on line 10, I've got my create index function, and it's ingesting one parameter here called file path. You'll remember from my YAML file that I'm passing in this whole string of things as my file path. And just a quick note about what I'm doing. I'm taking the variable here, user file, and I'm using a built-in docassimal method that goes and gets the path or where this file is stored along with its name. Docassymbol is automatically naming this file file.pdf because it's a PDF file and I need to strip that out before I send it to my function. So I'm using the dot replace, which is a standard Python method, and it looks for this string here, which is file.pdf, and replaces it with nothing, i.e. deletes it. So back to my modules. I'm setting here on line 11 something called PDF Reader, which is pulling in download loader's PDF Reader function from Llama Index, and then I'm setting a service context. What these two lines are doing, essentially, is setting up the things that Llama Index is going to use to go and get what I want and do what I need to do with it. So under service context, I'm telling it to use the LLM called chat open AI. I can set the temperature here. I'm setting it as 0.4. And the model is GPT 3.5 turbo along with these things because it has a higher rate limit that I've been using. Under line 13, I can just delete this line, so please ignore it. And then I'm setting a variable called documents, which I'm using the simple directory reader here to go and get that file path here. And remember, this is what I'm passing through. So simple directory reader is what it sounds like. It's going and reading that directory and then using the load data method to load all of the data that's in that folder. Here on line 15, I'm creating what's called a vector store index. If you haven't ever heard that term before, a vector store index is essentially a representation of every character in the document that I'm feeding into the model and how probable it is that one character follows another. One of the things that Llama Index does very well is create these vector store indexes for us from PDFs or from documents that we feed into it. Now, why do this? Why create a vector store index? Essentially, a vector store index and that type of database or data file lets us do a whole heck of a lot more with OpenAI's models or any generative AI model instead of just feeding it the straight text and asking it to do things with all of the text at one time. If you've ever run into a character limit with OpenAI, you'll know what I'm talking about. In theory, what I could have done instead of writing all this code is just extracted the text from the PDF and sent it along with this prompt down here to OpenAI. That only gets us so far though, because once you get past about two pages of PDF, OpenAI, OpenAI starts to set rate limits on what we're doing and will return errors because we're simply sending it too much text to handle at one time. Vector store indexes get around that by creating these probability databases that the models can then use to make predictions about what you're asking, essentially what a general purpose transformer is doing in the first place. Because I want to ask my index a question, I'm taking index D, which is our vector store index, and then I'm turning it into a query engine here with this line 16 with query engine equals index D as query engine. And then in line 17, I'm actually prompting the model to use query engine and then send this query to it. You're a very smart associate in a law firm who's been asked to create a summary of this document. Please provide a summary of the document, the type of document it is, yada, yada, yada. So I'm asking OpenAI's model to role play about the information that I'm sending it. One big note here is that I'm not asking it to go and get information from anywhere else. Because of the way this is structured and then I'm using the query engine, pass through all of this stuff, 
using the vector store index. What OpenAI's model can use to answer my question is just the PDF that I'm sending it. This is a handy way to cut way down on any hallucinations. I'm not saying that hallucinations won't occur. They're much, much, much less likely to occur when you use a method like this because the model is limited to the information that you're giving it. The last line of this prompt is I'm asking OpenAI to write the response in Markdown formatting. As you'll remember, Markdown formatting is what DocuSymbol uses to display information to the end user. And this actually works, surprisingly. OpenAI will return it in Markdown formatting most of the time, and it displays very nicely on the final screen. So now that I've gone through my file index.py file, I'm going to save that and return to my playground. I'll save this file as well, and let's see what happens when I do save and run. I get the upload file field. Let's find a file. I've dropped in a PDF here called Preparing for Court. One note, this is a machine readable PDF. Most PDFs are machine readable these days, so you may not have to worry about this, but just be aware that this hasn't been tested with PDFs that are not machine readable, that are just images. So now let's hit continue. And we see our summary from our OpenAI model. You can see here it's done what I've asked it to do, although the markdown formatting isn't super awesome. It is in paragraphs, which is kind of nice. So the first thing we have is a summary of what I actually sent it, which is a very accurate summary. It also classifies it as type of document, which I asked it to do. It's a guide for individuals representing themselves in court, known as pro se litigants. And then three key points here that I ask it to extract preparation, courtroom etiquette, and speaking in court. So it's talking about what someone needs to know and what the three key points are. So this is how, in just a few lines of code, you can create a summarization engine using OpenAI's GPT models to send it PDFs that you want summarized, or extract key points from, or do whatever you want to with it. I highly encourage you to test out different prompts here if you're using this. Right now, I'm just doing some minimal prompting. There's a lot that you can do with prompting, and you can get way more out of a system like this by figuring out what prompts work best. A large word of caution, though, in that whenever you send a PDF to a third-party system like this, which is what our code is doing, you are not guaranteed that they are going to keep whatever you send to them confidential or that they're not going to train future models on what you send to them. Be very, very careful if you're an attorney and you're thinking about sending PDFs that contain confidential information. Even though all that OpenAI is doing is creating a vector store index with this information, it's still getting the information from you whenever you upload it. So please be careful on what you're uploading, know what you're uploading, make sure it doesn't contain confidential information or things protected by attorney-client privilege. So if you've been wondering how to use DocuSymbol and OpenAI to do different things with legal information, such as summarize cases, summarize depositions that have been filed with the court, summarize orders, summarize anything that you want to that's in PDF format, hopefully this video is helpful.